Running back the tier list, this time we're doing every first baseman in Major League Baseball for the 2023 season. I did catchers a couple weeks ago. If you want to see that, there'll be a link to the playlist down in the description. Otherwise, drop a like on the video if you enjoy the tier list. Subscribe because you don't want to miss out on any of the content coming at you all summer long. Follow me on all my social media at GiraffeNeckMark. Links are also in the description. And let's just hop into this video. Let's start talking about it. So, of course, we go from elite all the way down to backup slash platoon because there are some guys who I think are good players just shouldn't be playing against certain pitching. And we'll get it started with Alec Bohm. Alec Bohm, of course, had been playing third base, but now is playing first because Reese Hoskins is out for the season. Alec Bohm is okay. I think at first base, he honestly even gets hurt a little bit more because his offensive numbers just aren't as good at that position, even though I think he's more of a first baseman than a third baseman. We're seeing him hit for average. We're seeing him hit for a little bit more power, but I still think, generally speaking, He's just an average player. I think he's fine. He's not great. He's not bad. I think right now, Alec Bohm is just bang on average. You should get more production out of first base, honestly. This is one of the reasons why I wanted to have backup or platoon, because Alex Kirilov is just a straight-up platoon guy. Like, don't let him face left-handed pitching. He can't do it. And against righties, he's been fine. They've been rocking him and Donovan Solano. I just went with Kirilov because shout out my boy Brandon Warren. He said Kirilov is the guy. So I'm going to put Kirilov in the backup or platoon. I think right now, based on what we've seen, it's just hard to judge what kind of player he actually is. He does does hit right-handed pitching well though. <sighs> Andrew Vaughn is in that same boat like I've been waiting. We've all been waiting for the Andrew Vaughn breakout. We thought that this year he's playing first base. He's getting consistent playing time. This could be the season, but Andrew Vaughn has just kind of been like the White Sox. <sighs> Disappointing, bland, whatever it is. Like a 750 OPS is fine. It's fine. It's nothing special. He's just like Alec Bohm. He's average for me right now. Anthony Rizzo, I'm going to give him a little bit more because the longevity that he's had in his career and the consistency. I think he's closer to getting to the later part of his career than he is to being in his prime. This year, he's a little bit above league average offensively. The power isn't really there, which is kind of what's making me think that he's getting a little bit older and not maybe in that prime anymore. I still think he's a solid first baseman, but I don't think I can really put him anywhere else above here. And you could make an argument he also belongs in average. Carlos Santana still does a lot of things well. Like he still gets on base, still an extra base hit machine. He's getting older, of course. So I think he probably is average. Just his ability to get on base alone makes him like a pretty worthy kind of good first baseman. He is 37 years old, doesn't move the same way just doesn't have that same like oomph but i'm gonna put him in average i like carlos santana oh this is a tough one but for christian walker i think he goes an all-star this dude is so good i think he's criminally underrated around the league look at his baseball savant page it is fascinating the dude just has red all over the place hits the ball hard consistently good fielder at first base just all around a very very good player i don't think he gets into the elite category because the guys who are up there they are just better they are different than christian walker but he is definitely a part of these top 10 first basemen that are in this next tier of players. He honestly got snubbed from the All-Star team, should have been on. He's having a great year, and he's just been really good. I know CJ Crone is struggling a little bit this year, 45 games, coming back from some injury stuff here and there, something he's always had to deal with. I think he is an average first baseman, though, at the end of the day. Like, he can kind of pencil him in for 25 to 30 home runs a year with 25 to 30 doubles and OPS hovering around 800, typically. It's pretty average right now, and in cores, obviously, the numbers get jacked up because the elevation in the big outfield, so I'm not going to look too far into it. He's average. There's a reason nobody but the Rockies wants him. Hey, to me, this is the first true backup. I don't think Dom Smith should be playing every single day at first base for the Nationals, and I don't necessarily think he does. He plays most often, but I mean, this is just not a everyday player right now. The Mets DFA'd him for a reason. He wasn't very good, and he just really hasn't done much this year. He has four home runs, eight doubles, a triple. Like, there's no oomph behind that bat. For a guy who's not even walking that much, I just don't think he's an everyday player. Which hurts, because Dom's like one of the nicest guys I've ever met. Yeah, Freddie Freeman is the definition of elite. Freddie Freeman is the best first baseman in baseball. Freddie Freeman Freeman is that guy. He's so good. How does he just continue to be unbelievably amazing? I mean, listen to these numbers. In his age 33-year-old season, 16 homers, major league best 30 doubles, 58 RBIs. He's even stole 12 bases. He's on pace for a 2020 season at 33 years old. Hitting 318 with a 395 average, 554 slugging, 940 OPS. Freddie Freeman is a Hall of Fame player. So good. Dodgers got a good one out there in LA. Ooh, what do I do about Jake Cronenworth? This year, he's playing poorly, but he's been good in the past, so I think I'm just going to put him in average. Not your stereotypical first baseman. Again, not a big power guy. So when he's not hitting for average or getting on base like he has in the past, or hitting for a higher average, I should say. Never really been a big average guy. But his slugging is like at 365 this year after another down year last year. Realistically, I think we're getting closer to the backup platoon role for him, but I still think he is average. He is a good player. He has more value to a team than just playing at first base. Like he can play second, he can play first, he can play short, he can play third, he can play the outfield, he can pitch. That's where Jake Cronenworth's true value is. But right now, just at first base, he's probably average. Jerry
Jared Young, new first baseman that the Cubs have called up. He's not young, though. He's 28 years old, basically. We're going to put him in the backup platoon. I mean, good story for him. I'm glad he got the call up here. He's getting to play with the Cubs. But yeah, there's just, there's not much there. The Cubs desperately need a first baseman, so they're trying anyone out. Jared Young's the new guy. I just, I don't think he's very good. I'm loving the version of Joey Votto we're seeing. I'm loving it. He's playing at an all-star caliber level in the, like, 15, 20 games that he's played thus far. But we do have to pump the brakes because, of course, small sample size. But we're seeing him hit for power. Not really worrying about striking out. Getting on base a little bit. I think it was in the Anthony Rizzo tier, just guys that are, like, good but not at that elite level or even that all-star level, just solid first baseman. A good veteran to have on this Reds team who is making a run for the postseason this year. Let's go Reds. Love to see it. One of the more fun, exciting teams in baseball. Let's call him America's team this year. Joey Votto has been solid and I think having him back is going to be huge for them because if he's going to play like this, that's a huge improvement for their offense. Jose Abreu has been god-awful this year, but... But since the month of June, Jose Abreu's got an 800 OPS. I don't think he's that all-star elite caliber that he was maybe coming into the season, but I'm still going to put Jose Abreu in solid. I know that might seem crazy because his numbers are terrible this year, but the last month and a half, he's been playing like the old Jose Abreu, and I still think there's a little bit more left in that tank. Maybe not as much as we thought, but I don't think he is by any means bad this year. I think he'll end up with a probably average season for a guy who has the consistency normally to be a solid player. So I know it's a little bit crazy, a little bit wrong probably, but I'm putting Jose Abreu in solid. Not giving up on him yet, especially with how well he has been playing recently. Whew, where do I put Josh Naylor? Because here's the thing with Josh Naylor. Like, he is a platoon guy. Doesn't really hit lefties, like, at all. But he's good. So he's not going to go in the backup or platoon. Whew, where do I put Josh Naylor? Where do I put him? I mean, he's hitting lefties better this year. He's got an 820 OPS. Pretty good. He feels better than the three guys in solid and feels closer to Christian Walker. So you know what? We're going to put Josh Naylor in the all-star tier. We're going to put Josh Naylor in the all-star tier. Two years in a row of WRC plus above 120 is very, very good good. That's 20% better than league average. He's hitting 300 this year, which is crazy. A guy who normally doesn't hit for average. He's got good pop in that bat. I'm going to put Josh Naylor in all-star. We might change it. He might go down to solid. We'll see how we feel, but I think he's right on that verge of solid and all-star. It's very good. Having a great year in Cleveland. Deserved to maybe be on the all-star team as well. Ooh, Lamont Wade. Lamont Wade is another guy who is very much a platoon player. Very much a platoon player. Wow, what do I do with Lamont Wade? <sighs> you know what? I'm going to put Lamont Wade in solid. I'm going to put him in solid. He has been solid. He's been pretty good this year. Rocking an OPS plus a 133 an OPS at 847. I don't believe in him as like an all-star caliber player. I could say he's having an all-star caliber season right now. And part of it is because the Giants don't let him face lefties. But you know what? Lamont Wade has been very good. I'm going to put him at the top of solid here. I think he belongs in front of these other guys right now. Matt Olson. Matt Olson's elite. I mean, I hate the Braves so much. Only the Braves would lose Freddie Freeman and replace him with Matt Olson, who is also one of the best first basemen in the league. Unbelievable season this year, especially with the power. The bat's been insane since they moved him to the five hole. 29 home runs and nine 33 OPS. I mean, he's making an argument to be the best first baseman in all of Major League Baseball. Matt Olson is sick. I hate that he's on the Braves because I, I really like this guy when he was on the A's. But of course, Matthew Kent Olson is going in that elite tier. He's disgustingly good. So I know Moustakas has got the Rockies logo on his hat, but he's playing for the Angels this year. Where do I put him, though? Uh, honestly, truthfully, he's probably a backup or platoon. I know he's rocking like 100 OPS plus right now, but yeah, I mean, he's the definition of a guy who probably shouldn't face a lefty, probably shouldn't play every single day. I think you're catching a little bit of lightning in the bottle here with Mike Moustakis. He's turning 35 in September. Like, this is not the same Moose that we once saw. I think he can have value to the Angels, but yeah, I mean, not that guy right now. Ooh, I love me some Nathaniel Lowe. I love Nathaniel Lowe. But is he all-star caliber? Is he? Oh, this is so tough. This is so, so tough. Because he feels closer to Christian Walker and Josh Naylor than this, this next group of guys. But the numbers this year, honestly, are a little bit disappointing. Like, last year he had a career season was amazing. This year, a little bit of a step back. Still great, but a little bit of a step back. I think I'm going to put him in solid. I think I'm going to put Nathaniel Lowe in solid, which I'm a big Nathaniel Lowe guy. He's on all three of my fantasy teams playing first base for me. But uh, yeah, solid. Solid. He's just good. He's a very good player. Paul Goldschmidt for me still goes in elite. I still think he is maybe one of the three best first basemen in all of Major League Baseball. Still hitting for average. Still hitting for power on a horrible Cardinals team. 856 OPS. OPS plus at 132. There's just not really anything to dislike about Paul Goldschmidt except maybe his age at 35, 36 years old. But I don't care. He could play on my team any day. I got Pete Alonso. I'd love Paul Goldschmidt on the Mets too. He's very good. Another guy who had some beef with maybe not making the all-star team. I still think he's an elite though, for sure. Coming off an MVP season, it's going to take a lot to knock him down. Speaking of which, my boy Pete, I mean, the way he started the season, he was so hot, but he's been cooled off a little bit. I think he's in the all-star tier. I think Pete is still an all-star caliber first baseman, without a doubt, but I think the fact that he has hit this bit of a rough stretch is hurting his numbers a little bit. The average is down to 215, which is 40 points below his career average, and the OPS is 50 points lower. Like, this just isn't an elite version of Pete Alonso yet. Still hitting for power, which I love. I mean, he's doing the things that I want, hitting home runs and driving in runs. But to get to
to that elite level, I feel like you have to be a more complete player, and Peach just not there for me right now. I know Rowdy Telez just went on the IL with an injury. Rowdy's just pretty not good. I I'm starting to truly believe he is just a platoon player. Don't let him face lefties, obviously. Don't play him every single day. He hits the ball hard. Like, I he's fun. He should be better. But boy, oh boy, Rowdy Telez just really, really doesn't really do that much, honestly. I don't know. It's Rowdy putting him back up a platoon. Again, hurts me. I like Rowdy. Now, I know Ryan O'Hearn has been playing first base, but that's because Ryan Mountcastle is injured. So I'm going to rank Ryan Mountcastle based on where I think he goes. I think Ryan Mountcastle is solid. I think Ryan Mountcastle is solid. He kind of gets screwed over because the Orioles were like, hey, sorry you're a righty. Sorry we moved left field back like a thousand feet and it hurts you. Like, he hits the ball hard, does a lot of things well. I think Baltimore is just like kind of a bad place for him again because that left field and he hasn't played in a month. So we haven't seen much and he was off to a cold start, but I haven't lost faith in Mountcastle. He's only 26. I think he's solid. Ooh, what to do about Ryan Noda? What to do about him? Because he is an interesting cat. Strikes out a ton, like a crazy amount. Striking out 33% of the time, but he's also walking almost 20%. And he plays in Oakland, hard to hit home runs there. 126 OPS plus. I guess he goes in solid. I guess he goes in solid. Like you might be able to make the argument like, oh, all-star level production, but I think we got to pump the brakes on Ryan Noda a little bit. Just like let him be solid. Let him be good. We'll put all these guys ahead of Jose Abreu because I, I think that's kind of where they belong. But Ryan Noda to me is a solid first baseman, a guy that the Oakland A's 100% should look to trade and get anything for at the deadline. Torkelson is starting to heat up, starting to show us some promise, but right now, at the time of recording, which is, what, July 8th, he is average. He is an average first baseman. I mean, he literally has a zero war. He has a 100 OPS plus, essentially. He's the definition of an average player this season. I think he's going to be fine. I think he's going to be great. We're seeing very, very encouraging signs. But right now, Spencer Torkelson is just an average first baseman. Oh, Tristan Casas. Oh, Tristan Casas. I really, I had super high hopes for you. I've had super, super high hopes, and I still do, but uh, not looking great recently. Not looking great this year. To be fair, just like Jose Abreu, you have been swinging it a lot better since June. An OPS at 794 with an on-base at 360. Power not being there is a little concerning, but he is still getting elite barrel rate, great exit velos. <sighs> I'm going to put him in average right now because I think that's being nice. I think he is at best right now this season an average first baseman. I haven't given up hope. I have not given up hope on Tristan Casas because he's like, I mean, the dude's a freak. He's awesome. But I need to see more soon. I need to see it. Keep playing him every day. Keep getting better. Ty France. Ty France is the king of solid. Ty France loves, loves being in the solid tier. Now, this year, it's not that great. Not as good as we've seen in the past from Ty France, which is why I think I'm going to put him in solid because this year he's like playing meh. But the last few years, he's been great. Ty France goes in solid. Just Mr. Consistently underrated, but also... Also, probably properly rated now. Although, my goodness, he has 22 doubles already in 84 games. Just no home runs. Probably the difference between, like, a great season and a solid season for Ty France. Oh, the Pasquatch. Vinny, Vinny, Vinny. Can't you see? We're gonna miss you, bud. He's out for the entire season with that injury, which sucks because Vinny Pasquantino has been awesome. He's been great. Very much goes in the solid tier. Again, I'll put him I'll put him ahead of all these guys. Oh, never mind. That's Jose Abreu. You go to the back. Vinny Pasquantino is very solid. Great eye at the plate. Good pop in the bat. Just an all-around very good player. It sucks that he got injured. Nick Prado's filling in very well, by the way. Like, he's also been pretty solid. But the Italian nightmare, Pasquatch, will miss you. Definitely solid. Was super excited to see what he could have done this year with a full season. Vlad Jr. is in the all-star tier for sure. I think he is one of the best first basemen in the league. We know it. Vladdy just absolutely mashes. And especially when you get him away from the Rogers Center in Toronto. You get him on the road. He has an 885 OPS with the 307 average. 10 home runs in 200 plate appearances. We're at home. He only has three. It's a weird thing. I, I can't explain it. Maybe you Blue Jays fans can. Still an all-star caliber player though absolutely mashes at the plate and that ass is a wagon what do i do with yandi oh what do I do with Yandi? I truthfully don't think he is in the tier with Freeman, Olsen, and Goldschmidt. I don't. I think he's playing like an elite first baseman this year, but is he? Ah! 160 WRC plus is insane. That's gross. And he had 146 last year. Oh, what do I do with Yandi? I can't even believe I questioned it. Yandi is elite. Hits the ball incredibly hard. He got the barrel rate up, which is why you're seeing the power numbers go up. He doesn't swing and miss. He doesn't chase. He doesn't strike out. He walks a ton. He does everything you want. Yandi Diaz is elite. I can't believe I actually thought about that. Yell at me in the comment section. Yandi's elite. He's sick. He's gross. He's got muscles for days. Last but certainly not least, we've got Yuli Gurriel of the Miami Marlins. Doesn't play first base like every day. Kind of seems to be a little bit in a backup platoon situation. It's kind of what he is. He just like is just kind of not that good. Backup platoon. He, hits, he has no power anymore. I know he's like hitting 270. His OPS plus is at 100, but that's kind of because of Marlins Park. I just can't put someone in average when they have three home runs and 200 plate appearances. He's fine. He's whatever. He's Yuli Gurriel. Marlins are having a great year. It's really not because of him. That's my tier 
tier list, we got four guys in elite, four in all-star, a bunch of very, very solid first baseman, a bunch of average. There's not that many bad ones. I'd love to know what you guys think about the tier list down in the comment section below. Let me know where you agree or disagree with me. Drop a like on the video if you did enjoy it, as well as subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the content coming at you. Follow me on all my social media, at GiraffeNickMark. Links are in description. Second base tier list will be up next, so keep an eye out for that. Thank you guys so much for watching. You know the drill from here on out. YouTube recommends you watch this video. This is my most recent upload, so click through those if you have not yet seen them. Thank you guys for watching, hanging out with me, and I'll catch you tomorrow for another video. Bye!